Praise the Lord, everybody. What a joy. You can, can be seated. What a real treat uh, and privilege for Heidi and I to be at the Rock once again. And I uh, always loved uh, what God's done in this ministry through the years and continues to do. And I'm just thrilled. I didn't know it was a year uh, kind of at this season marking Pastor Dan's uh, senior leadership here, how wonderful that is. And, of course, to see the Grand Papa over there, Pastor Jim, and, of course, Deborah, it's, uh, what, what gifts God has in the body. And you all are so blessed with so many really anointed and gifted communicators. Uh, pastor Dan, in fact, came and taught at our pastor's conference in January, did an absolutely splendid job. Everybody was talking to me about him and what a gift of God he is to you. And so you're very, very blessed. But then uh, to hear Luke, I listened to him online. What a, what a gift to hear Pastor Luke teach. What, a, what an amazing communicator. And Jessica, Jessica reminds me of her mama. Hallelujah. She's a great communicator. And, of course, uh, Jim and Deborah. So we love you all so much. But uh, even though you're loaded with great teachers and preachers and pastors and communicators, I'm glad you still have a little uh, sliver of time for the old gospel preacher, yes. Keith Hershey, to come to town. So I'm glad to be here tonight. You know, God's doing good things all over the world. Don't let your heart be troubled with all the chaos and problem and pain uh, politically and the instability all over the world, really. Uh, Jesus is still Lord. Aren't you glad that this, uh, this isn't a political meeting tonight? Aren't you glad of that? And uh, aren't you glad that you're not of this world, you're of another world? Aren't you glad that your citizenship is in heaven? And there's, there's, there, you don't, you know, there's no illegals there. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus pre-approves everybody. You know, the thing about our world today is so confusing, because I work with refugees. I work with people in, in Lebanon who are always afraid because they don't have proper papers. And I know a lot of people in the United States are afraid because they don't have proper whatever. In heaven, you don't got to worry about nothing. Jesus has covered you. If you believe that, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. It's good news. It's good news. I was telling Pastor Jim, Pastor Dan, and actually Pastor Luke before the service, uh, I was making a little note on my phone here before the service tonight. And I have preached here every year uh, for 26 years. And uh, so I go back a long time. I think the church started 28 years ago. And so I just have a great love. And really a lot of the expressions in my life, in Heidi's life, in the work of mutual faith around the world has been because of you, because you're planted in this place, because you give to your local church, because you've equipped little people like Heidi and I to do what we're called to do in the nation. So I want to say thank you for being you. Thank you for being planted in this place. Thank you for being faithful to the Lord. Let me show you real quick what you've been up to uh, during this last year. I got a little video. So let's take a minute and let's just watch this. Being sent once is what Mutual Faith Ministries has been doing for over three decades now. When my parents, Keith and Heidi Hershey, first launched Mutual Faith back in 1984, they began to equip teams and raise up leaders all around the world to share the love, what God has done in Christ for both you and me. In addition to the evangelism, outreaches, and leadership training, they have built mission centers and life centers, equipping and enabling indigenous leaders to fulfill their God-given callings. We continue in the same heritage, with the same calling, and with the same heart, to impart to people the gift of God's grace and unending love. Mutual Faith just completed our new Life Home Orphanage on our campus in General Santo City, the Philippines. What a beautiful space for God's grace to rescue and redeem 32 precious kids. Also, the Mutual Faith Middle East Life Center in Beirut, Lebanon, continues to thrill the hearts of thousands in this war-torn region. Each day we host over 300 children for education, training, and mentoring. Most of these kids are Syrian refugees, which brings us their families to help feed, clothe, and provide medical care. And of course, the Life Center USA, located just north of Los Angeles, continues to thrive, bringing help, hope, and healing 
to a hurting community. We've modeled the Life Center USA after our campuses around the world as we train and equip people in the unconditional love of the Father so they too can better go and share the love. Thanks for joining your faith with us. Remember, God loves you completely and we do too. Let's go and share the love. Praise the Lord. So thanks, precious friend. That's what you've been up to. What I'd like to do tonight just for a few moments is put something in your heart that's going to make you happy. It's going to make you see differently. It's going to make your, you, you see yourself before the Father differently because, see, most people see themselves before the Father based on themselves. And that's a pretty scary thought. But the beautiful thing about being in Christ, faith gets you out of you and into him. Faith delivers you from yourself and puts you into himself. And the beautiful thing, I like what Paul the Apostle said in, in, a, in Philippians chapter 3. He talked about that I might be found in him. See, what you and I have to do every day is to renew our mind to the reality of who we are. We're not to know ourselves according to the flesh. We're to know ourselves according to Christ. And so I want to share with you something tonight that if, 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 if it can settle in your spirit, it, it's going to stimulate your heart in a way to make you absolutely happy. It's going to be absolutely the thrill of believing. You know, the, there's a thrill in believing. The, you know, righteousness by faith, there's a thrill to because you can't get the revelation of it based on any human help. You need God's help. And that's why sometimes God wants to say something to you with a heavenly post. You know, today, everybody posts things. We're in this modern world with all the modern media, with technologies and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. How many of you all have a social media account? Anybody at all? Yeah, most of us here do. And what do people do? People post something. Why do they post a picture of what they had for lunch? Why do they post a picture of their kids, their grandkids? Because they want somebody to see what they're doing and they want somebody to like what they see. Isn't that true? We like when somebody likes what we post. You know, Heidi enjoys posting pictures. I don't post a lot of personal things. I have a, a, a fan page, Keith Hershey fan page. Every day I post something on the love of the Father. That's all I post. Just something so radical on the reality that God loves you completely. And there's no disappointment in the Father concerning you. I just want people to have an addiction to the reality of who they are in, in, in Christ. So that's all I post. I don't give personal pictures of, of hardly anything. But if you want to know about my personal life, you have to go to Heidi's Facebook page. Because Heidi always posts personal things and she posts pictures of the grandkids a lot and you know like she'll say to me hey did you see what I posted uh, this morning I said no I didn't see it oh I posted a picture of the girls and I got 137 likes I said 137 likes yeah I said it's a, I said why don't you post a picture of me and see what that does for you she she says I've tried it does nothing it gets no attention nobody likes it so Heidi doesn't even post pictures of, of the man. Hallelujah, huh? She posts pictures of the kid. But what I'm trying to say is we post something for people to like it. See, God has given a heavenly post. God has said something so significant, he wants you to see it and he wants you to like it. Because if you see it and you like it, it'll consume you. It has to do with radical love. So go with me in the scriptures, if you would, to Luke's gospel, chapter 2. Are you all glad you're here? Luke's gospel, chapter 2, in verse 12. This is when God interrupts human history with the announcement of a baby that was born. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who has come to be the Savior of the world. The Lamb of God who has come to... to, to uh, to really redeem and rescue the, the human race. So notice this. There was the heavenly angels, of course, in this announcement, this heavenly post. Verse 12 says this, and this will be the sign to you. Everybody say sign. sign. You know, a sign is something you have to see for it to influence you. You know, this afternoon, I drove from the San Fernando Valley, where we headquarter Mutual Faith Ministries, out here to the Inland Empire. And between, uh, you know, the San Fernando Valley and the Inland Empire, I saw a lot of signs. 
But you know, most of the signs didn't get my attention. They weren't distracting to me because I didn't take them that, to me. You know why? Because I had you in my heart. I had an assignment to come to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center, so the signs weren't distracting. But there have been times when I'm traveling, doing a road trip for ministry or something, and certain signs get my attention. It's amazing. I can see a sign, a billboard of a beautiful banana split. And it's amazing how I'm led by the Spirit of God to get off at that exit. And, and that sign was to me. It influenced me. But God gives a sign or a heavenly post from heaven, but you won't like it unless you understand it. See, most people today in our culture don't understand, they don't have the interpretation of the sign, so their heart's not moved, they don't get it. They don't understand what it means. So the sign again says, this will be the sign to you. Notice it has to be personal. You're going to find a baby, and the baby's going to be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. I want to talk to you a little bit tonight about the sign, what the sign means, and what the sign should do to you, because it'll, it'll fill you with a radical understanding of the love of the Father that moves you in such an astonishing way to share the love in the equipping of just receiving the understanding of the sign. You don't need much more equipping than just to be astonished with the love of the Lamb. And this is the beautiful thing, the sign that God gives. He didn't go to the big shots. He didn't go to the politicians, thank God. He didn't go to the billionaires, thank God. He went to shepherd boys. He went to simple people like the Keith Hershey's of the world, little farm kids that don't know which way is up, and he gives them a sign that's so significant, it astonishes the shepherds and it moves them. You know what it moves them to do? To share the love, to share the gospel. And the Bible says that everybody who heard what the shepherds said were astonished. Notice the shepherds never went to Bible school. The shepherds did not have any Bible verses memorized. The shepherds, when they preached, didn't preach about the people. They preached about the Savior. They didn't preach about them. They preached about Him. I've determined where I work around the world not to tell people what's wrong with them. I don't go to the Middle East to tell people what's wrong with them. If you want to do that, have at it. Hallelujah. But when I go to the Middle East, I tell people what's right about them. I don't, tell, I don't preach them. I preach Him, Jesus, the love of the Lamb of God. And you can see how faith moves people out of themselves into Himself. And there's mighty, marvelous transformations. And so there had to be a translation. There had to be an interpretation. You know, of a sign I was noticing. In fact, I asked Pastor Dan about the sign language, which I always love to see. I'm always fascinated with signs. If you were at home watching the seventh game of the World Series tonight, by the way, does anybody know who's winning? No, not really. Anyway. <laughs> Do you know, uh, you ever watch baseball coaches, you know, on third base? They, they got signs. And, and people are always trying to figure out the signs. There was a sign, the Bible says, from heaven. And the sign was a baby. But unless you have the interpretation or the proper translation, it won't move you. You and I need somebody to help us. When I travel in the nations of the world, I only speak English, and I don't speak English very well. So when I'm in Lebanon, for example, and I land in Lebanon, I'm lost. I'm lost from the time I land. I don't know north, south, east, west. The streets go every which way. So a staff person meets me. And is always with me. I feel comfortable when I have somebody who interprets the signs. I believe ministry gifts, the pastors, the apostles, prophets, evangelists, the, the people that are set in the body of Christ, are to help interpret the sign from heaven so people can really be astonished with the beauty of God's love for them and have a like moment, have a believing moment. Click the button, say, I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. You know, you have, to, you have to come to a place where you have no other addiction but the love of the Lamb. And when you get to that place, then you're moved for ministry. You know, these days, the only thing I spend my energy in, if that's the right word, is just to stay astonished with the love of God for me. That God loves me completely. That there's no disappointment in the Father concerning me. 
I mean, that takes faith for me to believe that. But when I stay astonished about the love of the Lamb of God, you know, I share it. I'm equipped to communicate it. And this is the beauty about understanding God's grace and love for you. So the sign is to you. Here's what the sign of Jesus is. The baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. You know, when the, when the shepherds saw the baby wrapped, it was a picture of what the baby was born to do. You know, the baby was born to die. The baby was born to pre-approve you. The sign in a sentence, in a statement, you know, could, could simply be the phrase of Scripture. That Jesus was given up, you know, for our unrighteousness and he was raised up for our justification. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. The sign shows you that his life and his death are significant. But the baby shows the life of the lamb, but wrapped in linen and swaddling clothes and lying in a manger shows his death. He was born to die. If you don't have the interpretation of the sign, the sign won't move you. You just say, oh, it's a baby. But really, it's a picture of redeeming love. Do you know when Jesus died, the Bible records this in Mark's gospel, chapter 15. We're not going to take time to turn there. But when Jesus died, there was a man by, by, the, by the name of Joseph of Arimathea. Remember that? He came and he crested the body of Jesus and they wrapped him in linen. And they laid him in a tomb hewn or cut out of a rock and they rolled a stone in front of it. So the life of Jesus wrapped in swaddling clothes at his birth, lying in a manger. The manger in those days where the livestock fed or was a trough, but it was cut out of a rock. You know, when I was a young boy in Michigan, in a small town, living out in the country as a farm kid, I raised pigs. I remember as a kid in 4-H, I would build feed troughs with wood. But, but in those days, the trough was stone. So the baby was wrapped and lying in the manger, and if you had an interpretation, it would move you. But if you don't get it, you don't get it. Our world is filled today with people who don't get it. And so the gospel doesn't move them. They're still trying in and of themselves to be qualified enough to find favor with the Father. Jesus has done everything from start to finish. If you believe that's good news, give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. It's good news. It's wonderful. And so the baby was lying in the manger. So the life of Jesus can show you that God is good to you. But the death of Jesus can show you that you are good to God. I love this thinking because the life of Jesus shows you the will of God in action. Jesus is the perfect picture of the Father. Jesus said no one knows the Father except the Son. So the life of Jesus proves to you that God is good to you. He heals. He provides. He feeds you. He protects you. He meets your needs. The life of Jesus shows God is good to you. But the death of Jesus shows that you are good to God. He took all your sin and gave you all his righteousness as a gift. And this is the beautiful thing about this kind of redeeming love. So I think these shepherds, when they saw this sign, they didn't just ignore it. They liked it. They had a believing moment. And then notice what it did. It moved them. Look at Luke 2. Verse 15, it says, So it was when the angels had gone away from them into the heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Hey, yo, bro, let's now go to Bethlehem and see this sign, see this sign or see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has posted. The Lord made it known to us. Verse 17, And when they saw the sign, when they had seen Jesus... They made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. Verse 18, and all those that heard it marveled. Everybody say marveled. Marveled. When's the last time you've just marveled at the gospel? When's the last time your mind has been absolutely so thrilled you just like act a little nuts? When's the last time that the gospel has come so alive in your spirit that it's hard to believe it? I've asked the Lord for my little life. I said, God, help me to preach the gospel where it marvels people. Help me to be so astonished with the sign of the work of one that people marvel 
at the love of the Lamb. And this is what I try to do in my own life. I try to put myself in a position of receiving the love of the Father where I marvel at his goodness because, you know, he really uh, triumphs and trumps, so to speak, all my frailty, all my weakness, all my humanity. And I'm real glad for that. I'm glad for that. How about you? It's good news. So, you know, when they shared the gospel, when they shared about the sign of this astonishing love, they didn't share it in an awkward way. They didn't share it in a clumsy way. They didn't share it in a religious way with a lot of hallelujahs and praise the Lord's and religious terminology. They just shared the beauty of the sign of the Lamb of God. And everyone who heard it marveled. I just came back to America week before last. I was in West Africa in poor, poor places. And uh, we did a graduation for our Life Leadership Institute and things. But, you know, I love to be with people and give them a picture of the Father's view of them. And to give them a view of themselves before the Father, not based on themselves. It gives such hope like you've got to be kidding me. There's got to be a place of astonishment. So when, when, when they shared the gospel, it wasn't awkward, it wasn't clumsy, it wasn't religious, it wasn't fake. But it was real. It was authentic. It was joyous. It has transforming Results. How, how do you share the love? How, how, do you, how do you connect and communicate? Do you got to get yourself all worked up? I remember when I was young in ministry, you know, I thought I had to pray two hours, you know, you know and it was wonderful to pray. Don't, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I had to work myself up like I had to debate somebody into the faith. The older I get, I don't debate nothing, no, no, no time, nowhere. Hallelujah. Now I'm ready to give an answer to every man. But what I'm trying to say is I want to live my life in such a way by just clicking the like button all day long that God loves me completely. He favors me abundantly. He blesses me eternally. His life shows me that God is good to me today and his death shows me I'm good to God today. And then you know what I do? I just automatically can share in any part of the walk of life and it's like you don't prepare. That your sharing is just an overflowing of your believing the sign. Because you know the sign is to you and for everybody around you. So I help interpret the sign. It's like I love the sign language when my youngest son Josh was young. He had a friend. His mom was uh, hearing impaired. And so when our families were together, the, the mother was brilliant and could speak and you know, read lips and all these things. But when she wanted to say something that nobody else should hear to the kids, it was sign language. And I was, was curious, man, what's that mean, you know? The sign language. You know, there's a lot of people today, we're coming into the Christmas season. And they're excited about Christmas because they get gifts. But they don't have a clue about the sign. They don't understand what the baby wrapped is, in a manger is. They don't know that the baby was born to buy, die to transform everybody eternally. If they can just see it and believe it by faith, it's a beautiful thing. So we have to figure out how to share the sign where we have this kind of uh, response of astonishment. Astonishment. You know, uh, I believe the disciples, or the, the, the shepherds, I should say, the shepherds experienced a couple of things. Let me show you real quickly. Just some things that I think you and I can do every day to prepare ourselves for life-giving ministry. Number one, I believe the shepherds experienced astounding love. Or you could say astounding grace. And when I use the term grace, I'm just talking about the unearned or unmerited favor of the Father. That you got no skin in the game when it comes to you standing before God. Jesus is everything. That's amazing grace. But you have to experience astounding love. It's radical. You've got to experience astounding grace. You have to believe it. And the only way you can believe it is to understand the sign. The experience that Jesus is the love of the Father. Jesus is the grace of God. Jesus is the unmerited favor of the Father that you and I partake of and feed on every day. But astounding simply means to be overwhelmed with amazement. Do you live overwhelmed with amazement 
every day about the love of the Father for you. It means to be shocked with wonder or surprised. You know, even on days that are so-called bad days for this God, because I'm still housed in flesh, so I still don't operate perfectly. I still uh, have the days where I'm a little grumpy, a little cranky. You know, there's things when things are going against me, the devil's attacking ministry or whatever, and I, I, I can be downright mean sometimes. And sometimes I think to myself, when I know myself according to the flesh, I get so disappointed in me. But you know what? I come back to the place of looking to the sign. And I think to myself, my goodness, I'm in him. Hallelujah. And I get absolutely refreshed and renewed because of astounding love and astounding grace. So be overwhelmed with just the great surprise of God's love and goodness for you. Second thing I think they did is they experienced abounding love or abounding grace. In other words, grace or love that increases, it grows. You know, your, your, your love can grow for the Father. You can grow in your understanding of the Father's love for you. It can, it can abound. Abound means to occur or exist in great quantities. It means to be rich or well supplied with. It means to be filled, uh, to overflow to the brim. And that's why I love this verse, Romans chapter 5, verse 17. The Bible says, For if by one man's offense death reigned through the one, speaking of Adam, much more those who receive an abundance of grace. See, it can, it can be a multiplied amount. And the gift of righteousness. I remind myself every day that my righteousness with God is gifted. I have to tell myself that truth. Otherwise, I can try to fight my way into a favorable point with the Father. But the beautiful thing is when you behold the sign of the Lamb of God, you can know that He has fully done it all. It says you can receive an abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and you reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. What good news. The scripture talks many times about growing in grace, growing in love, growing in the knowledge so you can abound with it. And that's really, really important. You know, sometimes through the years, people have uh, said different things to me when I preach. And, you know, I just get a, a time or two with people. And so people always don't understand signs, do they? Have you ever posted something on your Facebook or Instagram? People misunderstand things and they pick a fight with you. You know, it's interesting in this political season, I, I tell Heidi, I don't, I don't ever have a political opinion, you know. Uh, many years ago, in fact, right now in Liberia, West Africa, uh, they're having elections this next year. One of the guys running for president was our first mutual faith team leader in Liberia from 1985, 19, a guy named Hananai Zoe. He's, uh, he's running for president. So all of our teams in West Africa want us to uh, endorse him. And I said, no, we don't endorse nobody. We're not getting involved. I used to make friends with presidents and kings and things like that. But then when the presidents and kings did bad things, and they were run out of countries and now living in foreign countries and can't leave, otherwise they're going to be arrested. I just, it, hurt, it hurt the ministry immensely. So what I've learned to do is just pray for everybody. Pray for all those in authority. If I'm in Muslim countries, whatever country, whatever religion people have, I just pray for leaders. But, you know, it's, it's interesting. In preaching, a lot of times people misunderstand you. It's like talking to your spouse. Sometimes your spouse doesn't understand you or you don't understand your spouse and all God's people said... I knew I'd give you a good time to just to get in full agreement with me. But, but uh, through the years, you know, there's been things people didn't like, different things about the way I communicate the gospel. And uh, so people, you know, many years ago would say, Keith, you're just hyper faith. You're just a hyper faith. You're, all things are possible, Keith. Yeah, believe God, trust God. Yeah, you're just hyper faith. I said, okay, okay, you know, sorry, you know. Sorry you don't receive from me. I'm sorry. You know, no, no problem. Then, then, you know, years later, people say, oh, Keith, you're just hyper. You're hyper grace, Keith. You're just everything's grace, grace, grace. You're just the favor of God. And you're, I'm, oh, sorry, you know, I'm sorry you don't, don't see the sign the way I, I, I proclaimed it. Sorry, you know, no problem. Then, then in recent years, it's always, Keith, you're hyper love. Everything's the love of God for you, Keith. Yes, Keith, we've heard you say it a million times. God loves you completely. There's no disappointment in the Father concerning your hyper love. Okay, guilty. Sorry you don't like the way I post. 
The beauty of the sign. I was thinking about that because, you know, none of us like to be disliked. We all like to be liked. When we post something, we like somebody to like it. Isn't that true? And so I always was bothered. I said, God, I'm a terrible communicator. People seem to don't understand what I'm trying to say. But then my heart got thrilled with the gospel. Look at the Bible says, 1 Timothy 1.14. The Bible says, and the grace, everybody say grace. grace. And the grace of the Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith. Everybody say faith. faith. And love, say love, love. Which are in Christ Jesus. What's in Christ? Grace, faith, and love. And so I've just decided to say when people say I'm hyper whatever, I just say I'm hyper Jesus, hallelujah. I'm hyper the sign of the Lamb of God. Because Jesus, the Lamb of God, shows me in his life that God is good to me. He shows me in his death that I am good to God. Give the Lord a shout. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good news. I'm hyper Jesus. And I'm in Christ. And daily I find myself in Christ. I find myself in Christ when I feel like I'm good. And I find myself in Christ when I know I'm naughty. I find myself in Christ. And I do it by faith. Hallelujah. And you know what? I thrill my heart because as you behold the Lamb, you can make adjustments, you can make the U-turns, you can cooperate with the life and nature and character of Jesus Christ, but your standing with Him has not changed. So there's astounding love, there's abounding love. And the third thing, I think they experienced resounding love. A resounding grace. In other words, they told others. You know, people that are astonished with the love of God usually can't shut up. You know, people, people who never know how to share their faith don't, don't criticize them. Just help them get astonished again. Help them see the sign. Help people see the sign. There's a, a, a guy, um, I've been trying to lose some weight here since I come home from Africa I was going to the workout at the club and there's a precious guy there a Palestinian brother born in born in Jericho and he's he always talks to me I went to his house for a meal he's a Muslim but his heart's so wonderfully warmed To the love of the Father. I've been going to the club to work out and lose weight. How, how am I doing? <laughs> you all have no faith. This church is faithless. No, not really. I can't lose a pound. I, work, I tell how I can't lose one pound, you know. But anyway, uh, you know, I love talking to people when my heart's thrilled. And I love to tell them about the one who did it all. I tell you, it takes burdens and pressure and pain off people. And guys like uh, this guy, they weep. They weep. And you know what they do? They have believing moments in the love of the Lamb. Do they shift fully? Maybe not, but they're on their way. They're on their way. Just keep... Being astonished. I'm crying really good tonight. This is the beautiful thing about the gospel. This is the sign to you. If you don't know it's to you, you'll never share the love with astonishment. What you'll do is put a lot of pressure on people to make them feel like losers and like they got to qualify. But I tell you what, that's a that's a burden for anybody to try to bear. And that's why I love what the Apostle Paul, he came to a place, he says, man, I count my whole resume a pile of crap. I count it all a pile of dung just for the excellency of the knowledge of the love of the Lamb. Amen? Praise the Lord. 
God's so good. I hope your heart can be thrilled tonight with the love of God. By the way, tonight I have a gift for you. I don't know. Do we have a, a little book out here by any chance? No, it's okay. That's, there's a book back there. It's called uh, The Value of the Treasure. It's all about being astonished. It's free. It's not for sale. It's free. It's a gift. No strings attached. There's enough for everybody to have one. So pick up that book if you want and uh, use it as a sign to you and go over again the material of God's unending love for you. Did you all enjoy the word tonight? Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Do we have any updates on the baseball game? Anybody have any updates? Aren't you glad you can laugh? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just put your hands over your heart. Just think about the sign that's to you. You know, friend, Jesus has you covered. He's got you. He's got you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid if you think you're screwed up. You're just like me. What I want you to do tonight is just hit the like button. I want you to see what heaven posted. You're that loved. You're that favored. You're redeemed. Jesus lived to show you the Father. Jesus died to show you yourself before the Father. Don't be afraid. Father, I pray tonight that you give the people in this place a believing moment. Some people just need to be astonished again. Sometimes, Lord, we come to church just out of tradition. We come to church out of duty. We come to church to be faithful, to put in our time, to be obedient. And God, we know all those things are good. But God, we need to stay astonished. We need to believe the gospel. We need to be hyper Jesus every day. Father, help the people not to be disappointed in themselves. Help the people not to know themselves based on themselves. Help them to be astonished and find themselves in Christ and know themselves according to the love of the Lamb of God. Thank you for that, Father. Lord, I, I believe tonight you're just healing people. Just as we sit in your presence, you're healing people. You're lifting burdens and the bondage and the frustration and the condemnation. They are, we all carry at times. Thank you, Jesus. Father, help us to be like the shepherds. And whether we have any education or no education, we just know the sign. And the sign's enough to thrill anybody if we can just communicate it in a way where people can understand it. Help us, Father. 
Help us, Father. Thank you, Father. Maybe you're here tonight, you've never really committed your life to Jesus. This is the best time and the best place to do that. I'd like to give you a chance to say a prayer and say, Jesus, I believe you died for me. I believe you were raised from the dead for me, and I want to put my trust in you. I want to have faith in God and be born again. Jesus said you must be born again. You must have your spirit recreated with a life in the nature of God. Jesus comes and lives in you, in your spirit. If you'd like a prayer tonight to commit your life to Jesus, to be born again, come out of darkness into light, I just want you to raise your hand on the count of three so I can pray for you. Would you do that? One, two, three. If you'd like a prayer tonight to be born again, anybody at all? Anybody at all? Thank you, my friend. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? Could you come down here, my friend? Could I just pray with you real quick? Could you come on down? Let me just give you a hug. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anybody else? You're precious, my friend. You're beautiful. Come on down if you want this prayer. Give your life to Jesus to be born again. Hallelujah. Anybody else in the auditorium tonight? On this seventh game of the Super Bowl Wednesday. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just say this prayer with me. Say, Jesus, I receive your love. I see the sign. You died for me. You were raised for me. Wow. That's cool, Lord. I receive your love. Jesus, be Lord of my life. I'm born again. I receive the abundance of grace. I receive the gift of righteousness right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Give these people a pipe. If you all could just go with Pastor right here real quick. Hey, let me do real quick. Pastor Luke, come and get ready and just deliver me here. How many of you want prayer just uh, to be astonished in a great way all week long with the love of God? How many just need just the refreshment of the Father? Let's all stand to our feet real quick. Would you do that? Lift your hands to heaven and say this with you. Say, thank you, Jesus. I'm thrilled with the love of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your death, for your resurrection. Thank you that I'm born of God. Help me to share the love in a powerful way. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, love you guys. God bless you. Pastor Luke.